So by default, the effects in a DLive, let's jump back in my default library. You'll see that the effects uh, give you eight effects sends, 16 effects returns. If we jump into our effects up here, um, you'll see that there is 16 effects slots that you can use. And there's also the rack ultra effects, um, which I haven't actually played with yet. So that is a, an eventual thing for me. But in the default DLives without the expansion card, we have 16 effects. The problem with the default way of um, laying effects out with this is that on the, you'll see on the send channel, there's no processing. It's just the effects unit itself and any um, settings that you set with this, um, so on and so forth. Then on the return channel, it gives you a four band parametric EQ, but say you want a high pass and low pass. Now you only have two band parametric uh, because of that. What you can do is re, uh, you can change what the input and output is of each effect. So if we come into the effects tab here, we'll click on our first channel, first effect. You have, see up here we have front panel and back panel. The front panel is all your standard effects controls and back panel is your routing. So it, currently you see that it's patched from mono effects one bus. Let's change this to mono aux. We'll keep that as number one. And you'll notice that the effects channel one disappears as well. And we're gonna do this for the next few as well. Mono aux two. Mono aux three and monox four. Well, we'll do the next two as well. Monox five and then monox six. Now jump back into surface, come to mix, and then we're gonna select aux one to six and replace these first channels. And now instead of having no input processing, we now have all the standard auxiliary processing. So we have our first insert point for other effects or a dynate if you need. We have a four band parametric. Your graphic, which you can down here in the type, change to a 12 band parametric. You have your compressor and you have delay. So that instantly gives us so much more control of what we want the signal to sound like going into our effect. On the return, we still have only the four band parametric. So we're gonna change this. We're gonna jump into effects, come back to effect one. And you'll see here in the output section, if you view outputs, it is coming, output one is going to effects return one left, output two, which is the second side of the effects going to output uh, to effects return one right. We're going to unassign these and we are going to get rid of that um, effects return. I'm going to drag in one of these stereo channels that we created and click on the channel, come into processing and into the preamp section the source select is going to be rack effects. Effect unit one, output one and two. So now our effect is routed. So you send it to the auxiliary and then it, it goes through the effect and it returns on view outputs, input channel 65 left and right. I'm gonna do this for the next few effects and show you what the benefit of this is. So we go surface and we get rid of all of these effects because we don't want these channels. And we drag these guys in. And 70 button. So next channel, we come to processing, rack effects, two. Rack effects three, 
Back effects. Four. Rack effects five. And last but not least, rack effects six. Now, on all of our effects returns, we have standard channel processing as if you would have it as a normal any other input channel. So, if we want to make our thing sound extra spicy, we have a tube emulation that we can put at the start of the channel processing. We have our uh, customizable high and low passes. We have a gate for your effects. An insert point where you can insert another effect or a dynate, for instance. You have your parametric EQ. You have your compressor with totally selectable um, compressor types. Another insert point and the delay. Instead of the standard um, effects of just having your four channel, uh, four band parametric EQ, and that's it, you can also use the four band parametric on this still. If you jump into your effects here um, and you click on the effect and you come to parametric down here, this still actually does work. So if you wanted to save some of your parametric EQ on the channel and say you have a you know something that rings out weird at 2.35 you can pull that out and now it's gone here before it even comes to this um, processing channel and see it's not affected here so you technically have an eight band parametric eq to be able to uh, dial in sounds on this another advantage of doing things this way is if you come to mix rack and mix a config you can actually pull these effects sends down and it gives you a whole bunch of mixes back. And we hit apply. All of these are, are dedicated effect sends, which are, as we saw before, pretty limited. They don't give you any sort of processing capacity. But since we've rerouted them to auxiliaries, we've now gained them back. Um, sure, we've swapped them with um, auxiliaries, but now we have, you know, eight more. Uh, uh, eight more channels available basically you'll see on the effects remaining thing here this is a bit of a misnomer because it kind of implies that you we have 16 effects slots remaining but we're still able to use all of these so what it actually is is just the dedicated effects sends so you notice when I pull all of these down to zero it gives us 60 buses and uh, 16 effects. If I pull these effects up, let's go for two. Notice it gets, it pulls down mixes and effects remaining. So you only can have the 16 effects, uh, dedicated effects sends, and it pulls your mixes down anyway. So you may as well have them as auxiliaries and have the processing available. We don't need to waste, um, just waste a channel with limited effects like this. Uh, with limited um, channel processing. 